Welcome to our review on the life cycle of stars. So we do need to understand what actually happens to a star. So we need to understand its life cycle. Now within our universe, we've got billions and billions of stars and our sun is an average star. No matter what star we look at, of all of those ones that you can see in the sky and all the ones that you can't see as well, then they all formed the same way. And this doesn't matter how big they are, they all form the same way here. So what we actually start off with then is this huge cloud of gas, which is mainly hydrogen, and this is called a nebula. Now, what happens initially is that this huge cloud of gas is pulled together by gravity. What we then find is that a large ball of gas forms in the center of this cloud. Now, as that gets denser, it pulls more gas in. And then what we find is the ball gets hotter and hotter until it forms this thing called a protostar. Now, that protostar is going to continue to grow larger and eventually it's going to get so big and the center of it gets so hot that the atoms that make it up start joining together in this process of nuclear fusion. So when this is going on, when those atoms are joining together in nuclear fusion, we've got a main sequence star. When the star is in its main sequence phase, then the energy that's released by nuclear fusion pushes out against the gravity which keeps the star stable. And this is a state that can last for billions of years. So to give you an example, then our sun has actually been on its main sequence for around 5 billion years, and it's got another 5 billion years to go before it's actually going to start to die. So this is a long period of time that it remains in this main sequence stage, and this is all down to the fact that nuclear fusion is releasing energy, which pushes out against the gravity to stop it obviously collapsing on itself. Now, what we actually find happening to our star once it actually dies is completely dependent on its mass. So if we consider a small star, first of all, like our sun, then as they start to die, what's going to happen is it's going to cool and expand to become this thing called a red giant. Now, the outer layers of the star then break away and they form a new planetary nebula. And the white hot core of the star is all that's going to be left. And this is something referred to as a white dwarf. And over time, this will cool down until eventually it just fades away to nothing. If we consider a large star now then, what we find is it does expand and cool, but it's going to grow much bigger. And they turn into something called a red supergiant. Now, what we then see is something completely different to our small stars. The star then explodes in this gigantic explosion called a supernova. And during that supernova phase, then the core of the star is crushed down by these immense gravitational forces to form this very dense star made up of neutrons. And that is called a neutron star. Now, the neutron star is spinning very fast and sends pulses of radio waves to Earth, so we can actually pick up these radio waves from neutron stars here on Earth. If the star is even bigger, then the core is going to be crushed down into a tiny space and it forms a black hole. Now, one thing to remember about our black holes is that they have such an immense strength of gravity that nothing can escape not even the light, hence the name black hole. So it doesn't even let light escape because of that sheer massive force of gravity. When we think about our black holes then, we need to remember that these have near infinite densities due to their tiny volumes. So all of the mass of the core is crushed down into a space that's smaller than an atom. So because we've got such a massive density there, then we've got a huge gravitational force. And that gravitational force is incredibly strong, so nothing can escape. So any of these science fiction films that have obviously black holes as being some kind of pathway to another universe or something, then it's not going to happen. Let's face it, if anything goes into that black hole, that force of gravity is so huge that it's not going to be a pleasant experience, let's say. 